I have I've had a I've had a strange couple of months. Life has uh, thrown me a few curveballs, and I took some time off. And uh, while I was taking my time off, Tom phoned me up and said, "Hey Ben, do you fancy trying to find some interesting guitars for Daily Guitar Draw?" Uh, I know you're trying to take time off and relax and stuff, but maybe you'll find guitar shopping relaxing. And uh, well. When that call came in, I happened to be about 20 minutes away from Charlie Chandler's guitar experience and uh, I popped in and immediately saw this. Ooh, ooh, hold on, okay, cool, Da. Now here, shameless bit of uh, promotion for a friend of mine, uh, Mikey Demas uh, in the band Skindred. If you have not listened to them before, you really need to, I mean, genuinely. Uh, they were the, <laughs> pretty much the highlight of my Glastonbury this year, um, seeing them on the Truth stage. But uh, they've just had a new album uh, drop, and uh, I'm going to put a link in the description. They're also currently literally fighting for top place in the charts in the UK. Uh, I think they've got till Thursday. This video is going live on Tuesday. So seriously, if you guys wouldn't mind going to this link and buying the album, uh, well, I'd... Uh, um, at the very least, Mikey's going to buy me a drink or two. And hey, that would be fun for me. So I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Among uh, a, a few other things that uh, I've bought specifically because I want to do uh, a, a full teardown of the instrument. And this is not going to be us doing a level crown and polish or anything boring and prosaic like that. I picked this guitar up because I watched this brand emerge it felt like it copied a bunch of ideas and thoughts that I had had uh, and had published on my blog. And then uh, I watched the brand die. The whole time since then, say 2011 or so, uh, this was between 2007 and 2011 in England, uh, I have wanted to get my hands on one of these organic guitars. Uh, I'm still not sure if I love or loathe the name. Let me know what you think. I really like what the builder was doing and I am really really sad that they did not succeed as a company it was in with a bang out with a whimper sort of thing and if you know more let me know in the comments hell their website is still up they may still be in business although according to the website they're still charging about two thousand pounds for something like this and that is very very cheap they jumped on the CNC bandwagon very early on and did it very very well the the design of the guitar it's full of curves it's full of just incredibly lovely sexy shapes and is built with an ergonomic form factor in mind it hugs the body uh, it has essentially belly calves you can sort of see that there uh, well, it's got a tummy cut what would you even call that uh, this is solid Paduke with a Zebrano top and headstock cap and and it weighs eight pounds eight pounds the set neck joint is fully carved away and as a result I think of having that set neck it is very very resonant it has got bags of sustain it sort of feels Acoustically, it just keeps on going in the same way that I feel with uh, Les Paul Juniors and, and th things of that ilk. With a little bit, of, with, with the feedback that I like with that type of guitar. And I think the neck joint has a lot to do with that. Uh, we've got a compound radius, uh, I think it's 10 inches to 14, uh, there or thereabouts. Uh, Clues on locking tuners. It's just impeccably made. This was also there at the rise of bare knuckle pickups, and this is a custom set of bare knuckles, apparently. But then we start getting into the truly fun bits and pieces that can only effectively and efficiently be done with a CNC machine, maybe. Fight me in the comments. And genuinely, this is going to be... I, I really want your opinion on this instrument. Uh, 
I'm not going to be doing any work on the guitar today. The whole point of the Luthiers Teardowns, well, is I want to learn more about how this was done and why. Uh, I really want to know why the company did not work out as well. And potentially because there's so much work, even with an instrument that is made with a CNC machine, doing a lot of the work. Hell, look at the top even. You know, the top has also got that curve and then everything is uh, is rounded over and shaped. I, hell, I wouldn't want to program that into a machine myself. We've got an oil finish with wax over the top as well. On top of that, uh, applying oil finishes in a commercial setting is intensely time consuming. We would probably have to charge three or four thousand pounds, probably even more. I'm putting a number out of my uh, proverbial at this point, uh, even if it was utilizing uh, our machines out there. But uh, let's have a close up look, the logo as well. Just very clever, very clever indeed. Oh yes, don't forget, the other reason for doing this is that this guitar could be yours. It is on Daily Guitar Draw right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I regret that. I, uh, I picked it up promising that we would put it on Daily Guitar Draw, raise money for the Dorset Guitar Museum, and uh, they actually did what I promised. I kind of wanted to keep it for myself, slash maybe for the museum but mainly for myself. Whenever I do things like this, people say, hey, Ben, that's going to be a real dust magnet. You're just going to catch dust, etc., etc., etc." And that hasn't happened in this case. But um, what I've just done to you is I've made you look at the logo. And the whole time, what you should have been looking at is the recessed washers of the tuners. This is something that I, I blogged about a lot back then. It gives you a little bit more mass on the top of the guitar, a little bit more height, uh, a little bit more mass because you can have a slightly thicker uh, headstock if you like. But in this case, I don't think it's been done for that reason. I think it's been done just because, well, it's slick. We do have this Zebrano, book matched Zebrano going down the uh, headstock which is fine, except for the fact that other than this little bit here on the body, you can't really tell that the Zebrano on the top is book matched. So personally, I would have, hmm. That's what bothers me. Look, you've got a V pointing up towards the, uh, towards the nut. And on the headstock, you've got the veneers pointing towards the body. I think that it should have been the other way. You've got the sense of forward movement and uh, that V gets rid of that for me. A very, very nicely made nut, uh, impeccably put together. The fretwork is, uh, I think, well, I assume original, and again, very nicely done. Uh, it is a Macassar ebony. Yeah, Macassar ebony fretboard. Nice, delicate uh, position markers, smaller than usual. And uh, on the side here, you can see I, I think that's been done on purpose. Uh, normally at the 12th fret, if you see three, uh, three dot markers, it means somebody's made a mistake. Same thing here, look at the scallop at the end of the fretboard there. Uh, we've got 12, 15, 17, seriously, hold on, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. This is the weird thing, okay. Uh, it's actually, the body join is somewhere between the 17th and the 18th fret. I've lost count, 15, 16, 17. It's, no, 16th and the 17th fret. That's Ben thinking and counting at the same time, which obviously doesn't work. The, the guitar does feel like the nut is in very slightly the wrong place for me. And I haven't actually measured the scale length yet, so I need to check that out. But look at these sexy curves. And you can just start to see that we've got a, a very, very nice neck joint in there. We've got some inlaid pickups and an inlaid tunematic bridge. <laughs> the one thing sticking out of the top of the guitar is the uh, uh, string ferrules. 
which, uh, which amuses me. But uh, yeah, check out the route for the bridge. We'll, we'll have a closer look later. There's, it's not just the shape of the bridge. He's actually routed around the uh, intonation adjustment screws. And I like that. And then again, fairly deep, fairly tight uh, divots where your controls are going. Look at the quality of this finish. This is uh, years later. Now, I suspect that what we've got here is uh, essentially a very nasty uh, floor finishing oil. And uh, these things build up very, very, very rapidly. They've got high solids, lots of waxes, etc., in them, but they're also toxic as all hell. So if you're going to use that as a finish for a, for a guitar, do it all outside. Uh, but hey, a 2007 guitar, uh, you guys do the maths. Was that 14, 15 years old? Um, and, uh, and the finish is still looking absolutely incredible. There's a few dents and dings very lightly, which we should Let's see, there's, there you go. There's one just there. I can't quite. There you go. You can just see that. Why did we put this on the side? Damn it. I call it a modern radius carve. We, we do this, or have been doing this for a long time, where essentially you carve a, a curve, a radius into the top of the guitar, and then glue a, a top to it. But. Uh, there's also a traditional tummy carve on there. The whole thickness, uh, yeah, it's even throughout the whole thing, matching the radius on the top. And this, with a CNC machine, is nice and easy to do, <laughs> once you've done the drawing, I suppose. By hand, less so. Barrel jack, some people uh, say the barrel jacks have got longevity issues. This one is still going strong. I've never had one fail on me personally. Uh, but it is something to be aware of. I understand the look of things. It changes the tension ever so slightly uh, on the middle strings. Uh, for the longest time, I offset my string pearls. I'd have uh, four in line and then the, uh, the B and the E would go back and, uh, and do that. I'd love to do some experiments, actually. Who would like to see an experiment seeing what that does to the actual tension of the uh, of the instrument. I would also need to buy some way of, or figure out some way of measuring that tension. Solid Paduk body, a not quite matching Paduk neck, but that utterly edge free. That's the way to say it. It's, it's just incredible. It's in so, so, so comfy. The neck is a uh, slightly offset C shape, potentially. Oh, I can see where it's been sanded. Can you see that? If you look just there, follow the line you can see where that dips just a little bit below the, uh, the, line, the rest of the line of the neck. So straight edge on there, and you'd have a little bit of a dip there. So when they were doing the final hand sanding, which, uh, hey, CNC made doesn't mean, well, they don't put the things together, they don't sand them, sadly. That's just doing most of the routing for you. A whole hell of a lot of routing, but yeah, there's still people involved. A very, very nice, Wide volute. It's a happy volute. Look at that volute. We've got, uh, yeah, great big wide grin. Personally, uh, I would go in with more of a shape like that, but uh, hey, good quality uh, lock inclusive tuners. This guitar doesn't appear to have had huge amounts of, of love. There's some light divots in the, or dents. Those might actually steam out in the neck. <laughs> well, the back plate is recessed inside of a curve, which is which is nice to see, but also those are uh, hex headed bolts machine screws, so those are going to be going into threaded inserts, I assume. And I want to see if we've, the same thing is true of the locking 
well, of the uh, shallow strap locks. Maybe. I can't quite see inside there from this angle. What have we got? Nope, that looks like a screw. They put a lot of money into CNC machines. I think they were with uh, Trend, actually, uh, a UK company who I'm uh, big fans of. Uh, fairly sure Trend bought a very well known, I think Trend bought Elu, maybe, some Italian CNC router company as well. Anyway, uh, it is what it is. They were in bed with Trend. They paid a lot of money to have full page adverts uh, in all of the UK guitar press. They sent guitars to review seemingly every other month. And it was like, OK, we've had this idea. We've got this business. We've got some sort of investment somehow, bought a big machine and smack. They were in everybody's faces, and, which is fine and good. But this was made in 2007. 2011, Organic Guitars Limited closes. Did they try and make a guitar that was just too curvy for the market? Uh, I don't know. I do particularly enjoy this format of video. Uh, well, I hope you do too. Yep, little machine screw. Oh, look at that. Organic, classic, handmade in England. Actually, this is a, this is a thing. The whole point of this company, in fact, on the website, it still says you're taking modern machining methods or something like that and making guitars or whatever it is. But it also kept on saying handmade in England, handmade in England. And I know that there's an insane amount of handwork that goes into a guitar, no matter how the parts were routed out. But also, at what point can you stop saying handmade? Because it... I don't know. We've got that inside the back plate. That is a really cool thing. Uh, the shielding tape here is what's stuck to the, uh, the inside. Shielding tape on the back plate. You've got your serial number, it says organic guitars. Uh, uh, diagonally in the background, just a bit of a watermark. And it's also got the spec. Backplate mm. and batong. Serial number, specs, like watermarks, the builder's signature. <laughs> That's is, cool. Is that not just intent? This I is. I like that. Mm. Yeah, we like. That's we clean. like a lot. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? I like but it is, it, is it details like this yeah. that guaranteed that the company was going to fail? They should have been charging twice as much mm. as they did for this instrument, uh, for the amount of detail and, and work that went into it. Or not. I don't know. I'm, I'm literally going through the process right now of, of trying to figure out at which point my perfectionism gets turned off. If that's ever possible. No, uh, it my pointy thing, you like my pointy thing. Very nice. Okay, anyway, so we've got obviously standard three way switch. We've got a, uh, well, they don't what actually is that? That's a capacitor and yes, resistor. Yes, that's a silver mica capacitor. So it is pretty good quality. Okay, fantastic. So, very good quality bit. But is that a coil tap, coil split, or a some sort of a tone circuit. Uh, it looks like a. It looks like a coil split. Oh, this. Oh, this one's splitting. That one's splitting. That one. That must be a treble bleed. Possibly. A treble bleed. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Fair enough. It's, it's pretty clean though. It's cleanly done. No dry joints. Um, the. He's actually got bridge and neck on the on the wires there, mm. which is uh, good to see. Nice details. It might be a dry joint there. I'm still not a fan of barrel jacks. Yep, you're not a fan of anything that came after the 1930s, potentially. 70s. Yeah, but 1970s guitars have got 1920s technology in them. Yes. So. Good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a masterfully done uh, cavity, and there must have been a lot of prototyping going on. There's a flat area here for the barrel jack uh, nut to go uh, into. Every single 
one of these controls has got a perfect recess that is perfect and recessed. I like it. I suppose the only thing that I would say is uh, the, uh, the wire, the rest of the wires, it's all a little bit flimsy. Uh, I would say that's earth joint there is a little bit messy as well. And uh, these earth wires, the black and uh, the bare wires from the pickups are, personally, I would have liked to have seen that heat shrunk. Very, very nicely done. Just going to get these strings off and uh, we'll see. Well, how do you get that out as well? Come on. Uh, oh, hey, look at that. The whole plate is, uh, is magnetic. And yeah, isn't that cool? What's not cool is there's no pressure point to to lift it up, you have to actually physically poke it with something in order to get it off, mm. which is uh, not very well thought out. Uh, I'm going to assume a dual action truss rod. I am not going to adjust it because, uh, uh, well, I don't want to. Okay, while we're here, let's just get some crimson uh, radius gauges. And yeah, that's nine and a half. Yep. We've got a 10, and I'm going to guess 14 at the end. <laughs> yep, pretty much. So we've got a 10 to 14 inch radius. And this is another point of contention. Okay, so I'm going to take this pickup out. But while I'm doing that, my, my question to you is, as a player, would you not rather have, for example, hey, I'm a Telecaster player, I want a seven and a half inch radius or a nine and a half inch radius for the whole guitar. I play Les Paul, I want 12 inch radius. I play pointy metal making machines. I want the whole thing to be 18 inches or whatever it happens to be. Is a radius that goes from 10 to 14 Is it a multi-tool? Is it throwing everything at the wall and not actually pleasing any particular player? Or is it as good? For the longest time, I just blindly accepted that a 10 to 14, 10 to 16 inch radius is pretty much the, the absolute ideal. I am not sure where I sit on that particular topic, but these pickups, this construction technique, I love. Oh, okay, well, bare knuckle pickups, hand wound in the UK, uh, a shielded pickup cavity, which is fairly superfluous. We've got a shielded pickup wire, uh, etc. Uh, and then here on the end, you can just see through the shielding a, well, tenon. The top of the fretboard rests perfectly on the Zebrano top. There's too many tops in there. And getting that angle exactly right must have been fun. But uh, again, very, very clean. We've got, uh, from above you can see, we've got a, uh, a few holes that were drilled after the shielding because they don't have any paint in them. You've got a few holes for the, uh, for the long pickup screws. That must have been a little bit nerve wracking, feeling how thick the body is. If you're going the whole hog, why not use machine screws and inserts on these as well? That's also a, a very thin uh, pickup surround. That looks to me, I'm not sure what this pickup surround is made out of, but it doesn't quite feel like the standard material to me. Anyhow, I'm not expecting any surprises here. Yeah, no surprises. Okay, this is something you need to check every single time you de-string a guitar. Uh, if you develop string buzz, it may not be string buzz. Yeah, the washers that hold your tuners in, over time, 
the wood compresses, the wood dries out, and they loosen, and you end up with, with issues. That sort of feels a little bit different though. Let me see if I can actually tighten that up. And they're all a little bit loose. So this has never been done. <laughs> well, probably never been done. There we go. Now I can string up and we can hear what she sounds like. I love locking tuners. Uh, I'm just going through a Marshall DSL 40C. Uh, I do have a pedal board that's going to... I suppose I'll use the Small Speaker Overdrive by Great Eastern Effects Co. And maybe uh, Mikey Demas is an angry rhubarb. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, let's have... Do you know what? Just spotted something else. Interesting. Uh, the... Uh, the three-way toggle switch is Macassar Ebony as well, which is great. Look at that. Lovely Macassar Ebony. Nice little detail. Expensive. Uh, what it means is that this guitar here is worth a whole hell of a lot more than, uh, well, it costs. Uh, and it cost, and than it cost uh, when it was made. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I don't have a strap with strap locks on it at the moment, which is something I need to sort out. Uh, and I'm also not going to particularly play, I just want to show you the sounds. So we've got a pair of custom-made two-order bare knuckle pickups. I just had the strings off, I might have a little bit of tuning stabilities in, uh, in the long run, but uh, this is the volume thing. And... So yes, Sam was right. Uh, let's set it about half mast. So you can hear the effect. Oh, I'm gonna have to tune it off camera. You can hear the effect of the treble bleed. Oh, come on. Somebody did not stretch these strings properly. Doo da, doo da. Stretch the string, tune it. Stretch the string, tune it. Stretch the string, tune it. When it stays in tune, after the last time you stretch it, then you're done. If not, carry on stretching. As you play it, you're gonna stretch that out a little bit. Metal is ductile, metal moves. So I've had, I've had grown-ups who have been playing for 40 years, bring guitars in think, think, thinking that there is something fundamentally flawed with the guitar itself, and it turns out the only thing is they haven't been stretching their strings properly. We should probably do a video just about this. So, come on then, just some clean sounds. I've got the amp set, uh, bang in the middle on all settings, uh, treble, middle, bass, presence, etc. Neck, with the tone rolled off. Middle. I forgot all about the uh, coil tab as well. Uh, and then the bridge. Coil tab. Probably use a plectrum. Everybody else uses plectrums, don't they? Yeah, I just found a plectrum I've been looking for. The, the volume control being right there, it's, it's very stratty in the position, which is fine, it's, it gets in my way a little bit. 
middle. That's with a cool tap on. I'm sorry, plectrum. And bridge. Cool tap. This is an incredibly well balanced, essentially, what was it, eight pounds? It fits on my tummy very well because it's got all of these curves and things. It's balanced, it's balanced perfectly. And it's just got, it just keeps on going. The Luthiers Teardowns, we, we have had them on the channel a lot and then we took them off because it turned into a, oh, here's an interesting guitar, but yeah, I'm doing a level crown and polish and that got boring. We are not gonna do that anymore. We are getting uh, interesting guitars, we're getting old guitars, we're getting random things and a lot of them are gonna be on daily guitar draw, of course, because that's how we justify getting them through. A lot of them will be coming through from the, uh, or into the Dorset Guitar Museum collection. But uh, the, the, the whole idea is going back to what my original thought was, which is looking at the instruments, finding the instru interesting things that were done to them to create them, to make the sounds, to make the looks that they have, and to learn from it and to inform my own building and your building. And I hope you enjoy this kind of content. So thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, let me know uh, in the comments. I've said that about 14 times so far in this episode. I'm starting to talk like Tony Blair. Going into politics. Yes. <laughs> Let's not do that. Uh, yeah. Come on then. Have a good one. Goodbye.